Hey everyone, my name is Tori and today's video is going to be another empties video. So it's all the empties that I used up in the month of really kind of February and then a little bit into March. It's not as much as I usually have, but I'm moving soon. So it all has to go. Yes, I'm wearing my pajamas. It's a snow day. It's cozy. I've got coffee. I just did a whole get ready with me. Like I filmed this, this makeup look. I'm gonna upload it as a like get ready with me, no talking set to music kind of thing. So let me know if you like those videos. I used to do them a little more frequently and I don't know, they're a little bit easier for me, honestly, to do like quickly and get them uploaded. And I think they're fun to watch. Um, I don't know, I feel like there's something just kind of like therapeutic to watch someone just put on makeup without any talking and just calming music. So let me know if that's something you're interested in, but let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start off with this big box on top. This is the Clean Skin Club Clean Towels, the extra large. This is the single use biodegradable face wipes. So basically it's a clean towel every time. This has done wonders for my skin in terms of helping me with my acne journey. I have these on a subscribe and save with Amazon and I really like these because I feel like I've noticed a difference but I'm also able to use them in other ways. So whenever I wash my face in the morning I'll use one of these towelettes to dry my face off. Very absorbent, they're thick, they're just, they're soft, not abrasive, the whole thing. So they're really great for that purpose. But after that, I also wipe down my counters. I wipe my makeup brushes on them. I wipe things down. Like I use them for other things before throwing them away. So multi-use, really love these and will continue to use. Speaking of an acne journey, I've got two products here that I think have done really great things for my skin. This first one, especially this is Pinoxyl. This is a 10% benzyl peroxide maximum strength acne foaming wash. The point is, is it has benzoyl peroxide. I absolutely love this face wash. It's fragrance free, comes out like a white, almost kind of a cream type formula. It foams pretty decently on your face. I use it in the morning. I also have it in like a bar soap form and I use that in the morning as well. I've gone back and forth between the two. I prefer the tube, it's just a little bit easier to use. This really helps cut down on the breakouts. It helps treat existing breakouts and prevents new ones. So I really, really recommend this. I've gone through several of these. Shout out to my bestie for recommending this one. So good. It's inexpensive. You can get it on Amazon. You can use it over your chest, your back, your face, the whole thing. So definitely recommend that. The next thing I have here is by Neutrogena and this is the Stubborn Texture Daily Cleanser. It is a salicylic acid acne treatment and it has 4% glycolic and ooh, polyhydroxic hydroxy hydroxy polyhydroxy acids <laughs> i can read i promise it's fragrance free this is really great if you are looking for a gentle uh acid cleanser if you find that a chemical exfoliant or a salicylic acid cleanser is really irritating to your skin i would try this one i was a little nervous because stubborn texture to me reads like it would be really intense and it really wasn't i actually feel like it could have been for my skin a little bit more intense personal preference. I actually bought this off of Amazon because I ran out of my dermatologist office brand salicylic acid cleanser. I like that one a little bit better. I think the ingredients are just slightly different. It's just personal preference for me, but I do feel like this was a really great kind of in-between cleanser while I was waiting to go to the doctor to get my like prescription strength one. I really did like this. I, I would recommend this if you're looking for something that is a little more gentle or maybe you're kind of just getting started with salicylic acid cleansers. This is a good one to start with. It's at a better price point than like, you know, something at Sephora. So would recommend this. Next up is the CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion. I've talked about this so many times over the years. I use this on my face and my body. I love the pump on it. I love the formula. It's uh, kind of almost more gel cream and it comes out like, um, yeah, it's like a slightly thinner consistency. It absorbs quickly into the skin. It's just that good. It's that good. It's not greasy. It's very hydrating. It's very lightweight. So if you live in a more like hot, humid climate, but you're wanting something that's a lotion, but that's not too thick, I would go with this one over the moisturizing cream, which is the one that I use pretty much daily on my entire body. But I love this one specifically as a face moisturizer. When I used to live in a really, really hot, humid climate, I would use this one all over my body. It was plenty. The moisturizing cream of this, like from this brand that I use all the time, is would have been way too heavy. But where I live now, it's perfect. And I like to supplement this during the summer or just on my face. Absolutely love it. It's so good. Great for sensitive skin, fragrance free, checks all my boxes, would recommend. Next is a shower gel from Bath and Body Works and this is the Fragrance Twisted Peppermint. I get this every single holiday season. I absolutely love it. It is one of my top favorite seasonal fragrances of all time. Fragrance notes are not listed, but pretty sure off the top of my head, it's uh, balsam, candy cane, like cool peppermint, something like that, somewhere in that vicinity. It may be like a dash of vanilla. 
It is a warm, musky, fresh peppermint, but more candy cane than peppermint. It's not as cooling as a full-on peppermint. The balsam gives it a little bit of a warmth and a little bit more depth. I love it. It's so, so good for the holiday season. I will say, I talked about this in my last empties video, it smells a little different this year. The soap specifically smelled very different to me this year, and I really, it was giving plastic. And this year, the shower gel smells a little bit different to me as well. I would say like maybe a little more it's almost like a little heavy on the balsam maybe, but not like in a Christmas tree balsam way, like in a plastic balsam way. So it was a little off to me this year. So I'm interested to see what it smells like next year. Hopefully it smells exactly the same as it has been for the past, what, 10 years? However long. Love this. We'll still repurchase it, but I'm hoping that it smells like it used to um, come holiday season later this year. Next is a candle, and this is from the brand Callion Wax Co., and this is in the fragrance Fur and Clove. I spoke about this brand probably in my last few empties videos and in my holiday fragrances, like favorite holiday fragrances video as well. I, first of all, this fragrance, it's pure fur and clove. It's very much quintessential Christmas candle. It smells like a snowy evergreen with clove. Smells like it's cold outside, smells like it's tis the season. It smells so good if you love Christmassy holiday, like very seasonally specific fragrances. This is a really good one. This would also work just generally in the winter season. Like it just smells like it's cold outside. I will say in the long hours of burn time, this one can get a little strong, but I think it's purely just because of the fragrance notes. Some of them are a little lighter than others. When you get those like the eucalyptus, the clove, the fur, that sort of grouping of fragrance notes, the candles can come off stronger. What I started doing when it gets down to here, like this much wax and I can't light the candles anymore, I put them in the freezer, pop the wax out, put it in a wax warmer. So she will go into the freezer. Everything left is makeup. First thing in here is the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. And this is my mm, second or third tube of this, I think. I have one more left from kind of bulk buying them during the, the uh, Sephora VIB sale in, was it October? Yes. I bought three, I think, in October. And I have found that this dries out very quickly once you open it. I have one more tube from that sale. Haven't opened it. I'm interested to see if it's a little drier just starting out. I don't know. That's the only downside about this mascara is that it dries out really quickly. So you can't get like, okay, for example, the Benefit Roller Lash that I've been using for what feels like an eternity, and I know you're supposed to throw your mascaras away every month or two months or whatever, but look, it's still working and it's still fine. And this, and it doesn't smell weird. It doesn't irritate my eyes. So I'm gonna keep using it until it dries out or goes bad. Hasn't yet. And this has lasted so much longer than the Tower 28. So with that, it's like the Tower 28 price point is about $20, I think. The mascara is really, really good. The lift, the curl, the hold, everything. Um, the tubing element of it, when you wash it off, it's easy to remove. It doesn't flake. However, once it starts to dry out, it starts flaking. So I would say like four weeks in, which to me is not a lot of time with a mascara. I feel like I can usually get mascaras to last a lot longer than that. So I, I don't know. I think with this one, I love it. It's it's one of my top favorite mascaras of all time, honestly, really is. But it just dries so quickly and it's only good for a small amount of time. So that's my that's my downside with this. If you're repurchasing this a lot, that $20 price point doesn't really seem that great suddenly. And I don't know. I don't know. I still love it and I think I'm still going to buy it and I'm still going to use it, but I'm still on the fence if like this is going to be the one for me forever just because it's like 20 bucks every 4 weeks. I don't want to be repurchasing something so frequently that's at a higher end price point. That's all I'm saying. So all that being said, will I repurchase it? I feel like I would. I don't know. I'm in like a moral dilemma. Honestly, I'll probably go back to buying the L'Oreal mascara off Amazon. That's probably where I am, but I do love this. I don't know. Next is a brow gel, and this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. This is one of my favorite brow gels of all time. I will say, I don't know why I feel this way, but lately I haven't been loving it like I used to. I think it's because the comb suddenly feels too big. It hasn't ever felt that way for me ever in the years I've been using it, and suddenly I'm just like, eh. I prefer a different style of comb, like a different spoolie or a different like plastic comb or something. So lately I've been using the Benefit 24 hour brow setter. This is like a deluxe size sample, I think. I got this with free with purchase or something. And this one has a, like a comb on it. It's got like the long bristles on one end and then the short on the other. And 
I, I don't know. I feel like I just prefer this because what's happening with this Anastasia Beverly Hills comb is that it's like spreading my foundation weird. And if you accidentally go outside the lines of your brows, your foundation gets very streaky, which is like a thing normally anyway. But I think if you're like in a hurry or you're not super precise, it's very easy for it to look kind of sloppy very quickly. And I just feel like I can get a more precise better looking application with the benefit one. Never thought I'd say that. So here we are. Uh, we'll see what happens. I think what I'll end up doing when I run out of this one is I'll buy it in the full size, try it out, see how we like it and go from there. I don't know. I do want to try the new, the new ABH brow gel. That's like the, I think it's the brow freeze. It's not the one in the pot. It's like in a tube like this. It has a comb similar to this benefit one. So I do want to try that one. I'll keep you posted. The next three things are lip products. And I have been just like in my lip product era right now. I am obsessed with lip products. Like I can't, I can't stop. I can't stop. This is the Laneige Lip Glowy Balm. And this is the fragrance shade, fragrance and shade grapefruit. It has like a slight, slight peachy orange coralish tint to it. It's like the same color as this tube. You really can't see it when it's on your lips. It goes on pretty clear with maybe like the lightest, sheerest touch of color. I really liked this because it smelled so good to me. I don't like grapefruit at all. I don't like grapefruit juice or the actual like grapefruit, like eating, no. It's so tart and disgusting to me, but I love the smell of it. Like I, I love um, like any type of body products or lip products or anything that smells like grapefruit, love it, but I don't wanna eat it. It's, I don't know. I really liked this. I don't know that I would repurchase it. So I really like it as like a prep before makeup step. But when I would reapply this throughout the day, I felt that it made my lips drier. And I felt the same way about the lips, is it the lip sleeping mask? It's the one in the pot. If I'm using that as like an overnight treatment or a lot throughout the day, I felt that it just, yeah, it just made my lips drier. So I think there's an ingredient in this that just doesn't agree with my skin, my lips. So probably why I wouldn't repurchase this or really anything from the lip line from Laneige, but I would recommend it and that I do like it as like a lip gloss like a purse gloss kind of thing. So take that for what you will, I guess. Next is my Maybelline Lifter Gloss in the shade Sun. And I feel like there's maybe a little bit in there that I could get out. It's just, it's starting to get to where I can't like dig it out of the very, very bottom there. This is like a beigey color with like very, very fine gold shimmer in it. It smells like vanilla. Oh yeah, it smells good. Maybe not vanilla vanilla. It reminds me of a, um, it's sweet, like a sweet vanilla, but it reminds me of Mac like MAC lip gloss smell. They smell almost identical to me. I really, really enjoyed this gloss. It's so smoothing, it's shiny, uh, comforting, juicy, the whole thing. This is definitely something that I would repurchase in another shade. I would even repurchase this same shade as well. This is really pretty over really any lip liner because it's kind of got that beigey base to it, but the Gold Flex give your lips such a pretty shimmery, pouty, glossy look. So this is definitely something I would recommend. The only thing is, you don't get a lot of product in here. And I feel like nobody really talks about that. <laughs> um, the doe foot in this is massive. Okay, so there's the big doe foot. And when you, it looks like there should be a lot, but if you kind of look through there, that's a really skinny little, I don't know, opening in there. And when you put this in there, it takes up so much space. I just, you don't get a lot of product. It reminds me a lot of the Kai glosses. Are they even, do those still exist? I feel like they do. I had one of those a long time ago. I flew through that lip gloss and I feel the same way about this one. And then I started comparing how much you get. This is 0.18 fluid ounces. And for example, in like a Summer Friday's lip balm, you get 0.5, you know, or uh, let's see, what else do I got here? Dior lip glow oil, you get 0 0.20, which like, that's not that much more, but you get the idea. And there's one more that I wanted to say. Fenty lip gloss, travel size. Deluxe sample, travel size, 0.18. These are the same. This is a mini. This is considered a mini from Fenty, and this is a full size. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You don't get a lot of product in it. Take that for what you will. I mean, it's a drugstore price point, sort of, but I feel like they're kind of more on the expensive side of the drugstore. They are, Maybelline, L'Oreal, they're getting up there. So to me, you're just not getting a ton of product, but I do like the product. Just, just saying. Next up is something I feel the exact same way about in terms of how much product you don't get. This is the <laughs> Alice Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Gloss. 
<sighs> it's in the shade Cherry Vanilla. So I got this in the last Sephora sale. Was it the April Sephora sale of last year? Or the October, I can't remember. I, I think it was April because I wanted this because the shade was really pretty. So it's got this really nice curved applicator. It holds a lot of product in there. There's like even a little divot. I don't even know if you can see that. It smells good. It smells like um, something from your childhood, like a Bonnebel kind of lip gloss type thing. This is uh, plumping. It is smoothing. It's very high shine, very glossy. I think if you like a, th a thicker kind of... Um, really shiny, almost lacquer looking lip gloss. This one's for you. It does fill in your lip lines. I do think the formula is good. It's not really my personal preference. I prefer a thinner gloss. I don't, I want something really high shine, but I want it to be thin and comfortable. When it starts getting this thick, I'm kind of like doing this. So I just, it's like a texture thing to me, but I still wear it a lot and I still really like it. I think my lips look really nice with this on, but I don't think you get a lot of product. I flew through this way too fast and it dried my lips out. So I was having to, every time I'd reapply it, sometimes I would be reapplying it because I felt like my lips were dry, not just because I wanted like the look of the gloss. So I feel the same way about it that I do about like the Laneige stuff. It just dries my lips out and then you have to use it so much more because your lips are drier. Does that make sense? I think that would be really the only reason I wouldn't repurchase it. And then also you only get 0.11 fluid ounces of product, which, that's just not a lot. It's just not a lot for how much I'm applying it and how much you get out in one scoop and the price point. So that's really all it is. I do really like it. I would recommend it. Like if you want something that's going to plump, smooth, the whole thing, high shine, like it's a great formula. It's really good. But it's for me, it's like how much you get price point and it dries my lips out. And I just like can't get there with that. But I did enjoy it while I had it. There's that. The last two things I have here are powder products. This is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Bronzer. I have mine in the lightest shade, it's 200 Fair. I actually was almost done with it and then I dropped it and it shattered. So that's why it's completely empty. I really loved this bronzer. I was reaching for it over, well, I mean, obviously over all of my other bronzers, including Charlotte Tilbury, Hourglass, uh, everything, everything, Benefit, all the other bronzers love this one. It's very buildable and very smooth. And I love the undertone of it. I just thought the shade match was really good for me. And it looked so nice on my skin. What I love the most about it is it just looked very natural on my skin and I could build it so I could wear it more on like uh, just a light dusting, but I could also kind of build it up to be, yeah, to look darker and a little more intense. And it kind of made it work for me at any stage of self tan. Like when I'm really, really fair to when I'm my tannest, which again is not that tan, but this would work for me pretty much for all of those stages. This is something I would definitely repurchase. Again, I would buy this on Amazon and really all the drugstore makeup, including like Maybelline, lip gloss, all of that. You can get it cheaper on Amazon than you can at Ulta. So if I were to repurchase it, I would go there. The only reason I am not repurchasing it is just because I have other bronzers to use. Up. If I had no other bronzers, I would repurchase this. And that's saying a lot because it's like right up there with my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. Those are just like the two top tier bronzers for me, regardless of price point, high-end drugstore, all of that. I absolutely love it. Would totally recommend and repurchase. Laura Mercier Loose Translucent Setting Powder. I've been using this powder for years. Not this exact one, but this this powder for years. I've gone through so many of them. It's just such a good, solid, staple product for me. I always come back to this. I will try other powders and we're right back where we started every time. So right now I am using, like I said, trying other powders. I'm using two other powders right now. And I still, this still is my favorite. I love this one. It's really great for my combo oily skin. I can set my under eyes without it looking too dry and I can set my T-zone without looking too oily throughout the day, but it doesn't look um, cakey or gross or dry or anything. It's just the perfect setting powder. I haven't found something that I like better than this yet. And I don't know if I ever will. Well, that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.